this here's a 1976 Datsun Laurel. Um, yeah, pretty rare, not many of them in the UK left. So basically, this car uh, pulled it out of a barn. A bit, not a barn find, because it was still drivable and stuff, but it was still rotten. Uh, but yeah, it was blue, originally blue, completely standard. Had some Wolf Race slot mags on it. Um, it was supposedly already sold. Uh, but yeah, I offered the money and I got it basically. So yeah, and a uh, couple of years of owning it, um, I decided to do uh, like a resto on it because it was getting a bit, getting a bit crappy. Uh, so yeah, so pulled it all down, stripped it all. Uh, me and a couple of mates bare metaled it. Uh, yeah, then I decided to put the bigger engine in it as well, the L28 on the triple Webers, manualed it because it was, was auto. Uh, yeah, and then painted it cream. The, the colour was originally blue, but this one's, this colour is an old Nissan 70s Skyline Ken Mary colour. Um, found the colour code and yeah, done it in that. The engine's the same as a Z, so the, the L28's out of a 280Z, there's an L28 over there or 280Z over there. Uh, and basically that's the same engine as that. Um, the carbs and that, I got given them. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a, you know, I got, I got two carbs off a mate for nothing and then the other one was to do with some wheel, a wheel deal. Uh, so yeah, all good on that. Um, the rest of the parts, the gearbox, that's off a of Z as well. So once that's done, um, once I got all that off of um, Rich, basically put it all in and got it all working. Yeah. When I first got it, it was a two litre auto. Pretty gutless, but it still did what it needed to do. Kick down, just shook the whole car. Uh, on the UK roads, it's fine on the UK roads. I mean, I've lowered it stupid now. Um, probably a bit too low for a lot of people, but I love it being low. You're just driving along, like, just enjoying the fact that you're banging off the ground. <laughs> but that's all part of it, and everyone's into what they're into. Um, as for now, I put the L28 in it with the manual. It's lovely. It pulls really strong, very torquey. It doesn't, I don't need to really do anything else to it. I'm happy with how it is. I don't drive it too often, but when I do drive it, I just hit the B roads in it really. It's just to hear the carbs bounce off the trees on a B road is, you can't, it's no other sound like it. Cruising past other people on the motorway and stuff, everyone does. I always have a little cheeky look to see what people's reactions are. I get a lot of thumbs up. I get a lot of, uh, a lot of beeps and stuff. Of course, it's a car that sticks out on the road. Um, yeah, driving to car shows, uh, and at car shows a lot of people come and talk to me about it I tend not to hang around my car a lot of car shows I don't like you end up repeating yourself all day the people that stand by their cars all day have a story that they're telling everyone and I just like to walk off and enjoy the show and enjoy the car being there and people looking at it yeah but obviously everyone builds a car for themselves but we all build cars for shows as well don't we you wouldn't build a car like this and go oh, I'm not showing it so that's part of it really um, Cleon Fenton this is my Nissan 300ZX twin turbo uh, 96 imported from Torque GT, 2019 I've got that now. 20 years ago I actually had one of these, I had to sell it to buy my first house and now I'm at a stage in my life where I could revisit and here it is. There's a lot of searching to try and find the right one. Found this in stock colour as well, I had it repainted and managed to get the stance and the appearance I want now. So for me I wanted the stance, I wanted a Pacific stance, I like the lip to arch look, I like to fit right. Um, imported the wheels from Switzerland, rare set of Velside Evos, um, so really happy with them, they sit well. And I just wanted that look when it's on the floor, it just looks beautiful in my opinion. Still the same experience of driving it, obviously Air Ride is as close to stock as you're going to get in my opinion to a certain degree a lot comfier than a stock shock. Um, yeah and I'm really happy with it. I've got a uh, transporter on Air Ride as well, on, low on the floor, big wheels, custom bits and bobs done to it to get it how I like the look of. For me it's about the stance, it's about the fitment, it's about it looking nice. Uh, I'm going to turn my attention a little bit to the engine this year. I've just finished all the interior, I've had a custom steering wheel done by Controls Customs. They do all the carbon flat bottom and stuff, turned out really well, quite happy with that. I just want to bring the power up a little bit really, um, so it's a case of tweaking. I've got a separate ECU, I didn't know that you can actually add traction control to a, a car that's like, what, 24 years old? Um, obviously putting the new ECU and adjusting the engine parameters and, and tweaking stuff, I'll be able to do that, so that's happy days. It still, it still goes nice, but obviously you always want that, you want to push the boundaries and get a little bit more, you know?
I'm Paul Foster. This is a BMW E21 1982, um, and I've owned it 10 years. So I bought the car as a shell. Uh, it's taken 10 years to get it from a bare shell to this. Um, basically, reshelling the roof, putting a new roof on it, new inner wing uh, seals, arches. Everything's been replaced with genuine BMW parts, um, and this is how we got it today. I wanted to have something different. I like wide body, so we went for the Group 2 kit. Uh, we made that inch and a half wider on the front, three inches wider on the back to accommodate the wide wheels. Uh, always loved TVR V8, but I never liked the smell of fiberglass, so I ended up getting a TVR V8 engine for it and because I always liked V8 and I loved the sound of it. Over the 10 years, I've managed to have a, a plan in my head of what I wanted to do. We've done a 3D CAD design of what the car would look like, but not necessarily how the drivetrain would be. So I went to about finding a TVR V8, having that rebuilt to a race spec, then TVR gearbox, uh, sorry, a Cosworth gearbox, uh, mated to a TVR T5 uh, bell housing, custom made prop shaft, uh, it's got a quaif, rear diff, uh, and then everything's been built around that drivetrain out. Um, to get it hopefully as near to perfect as I could possibly get it. We've had it dynoed with the air leak, it's 211 brake, 211.1 torque, a 900 kilo car. Uh, I've not pushed it or driven it in anger. I've had it up to 85 and it just wants to pull and pull and pull. Um, it doesn't feel like it's only 211 brake, it feels like a lot more. Uh, but once we've got the air leak done, um, and have it all remapped again. I'm sure we'd get a better power drain from it and it'd be a lot better. It feels really racy on the road, um, especially through the country lanes. We've set the suspension up a little bit harder on the back just so that we're not getting any rubbing on the rear arches, but it's perfect through these lanes. It's, it's like the closest thing to being in a track, but on a public road. It was built for me and my pleasure, but it's, instilling that joy into children to get them into this scene in 10, 15 years time. Modern day cars don't infill that power into children, I don't think. I think now if you've got a car like this that get kids into being a petrol head, all well and good, that's what you want. My name's Tony, this is a 1972 Datsun 240Z and I have had this one for seven years. It, it's a shape of car that I fell in love with 25 years ago. Um, I've got another slightly later car that I've had for 22 years, um, but the 240 is, it's the original, you know, designed in the mid 60s. It, it's the first of its kind and I wanted a 240 as well. Driving the car on the whole, it's, uh, it's not terribly comfortable. It's noisy, um, it's smelly. Um, it's all the fun of an old car, you know, that's, what, that's why you like it. When I got it, it was a rolling shell. Um, the engine wasn't in it. Um, it was, this is the original colour of the car, but it had a pretty rough brown respray in the States. The interior was pretty much trashed. It's a California car, so it's lived its life in the sun. And that really doesn't do them any good in terms of yeah all the plastics will fall to bits but next to no rust which is really lucky so uh it's on coil overs it's on air lift um we put a later engine in it a 2.8 uh big carburetors big exhaust all the old school tuning stuff i did think about an engine swap didn't really want that so it stayed old school with that side of things and that counterbalances the carbon that I've added on the outside of the car. I've got a 1978 260Z, which is a UK car, right-hand drive, much less modified, um, much easier to drive, much more comfortable, nice big balloon tyres and soft suspension. It, it, it's a lot more relaxing. This thing can be hard work, but I just love it. Just love it. I love the shape of it, um, the noise it makes, the smell. It's an old school car you have to drive. Won't do anything for you. There's, uh, there's no ABS, there's no traction control, there's no power steering, no electric windows, none of that. Just you and the car and 
the fan. My name's Anthony, um, this is Mark 1 Golf Cabriolet. Uh, owned it for about six, seven years now. I basically, it was like I got one of them PPI refunds, of like a grand, and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna buy a classic car. Um, and I found this, like the typical story, it was a barn find, it was in the middle of a farm, it hadn't been touched for seven, eight years. So it was pink, the paint was moldy. Um, and just slowly from there, just kind of started modifying it bit by bit. Um, and run it for about four or five years just on coilovers with just the paint polished up and a few bits done to it. Um, but the engine blew up a couple of years ago. I thought I'd just do a quick engine swap, just nothing you know, too deep, just a couple of grand engine swap in and out, which then turned into a year and a half full strip down and rebuild on my driveway, you know, as much as I could do myself on my driveway anyway. Um, so yeah, we're now running a 1.8 supercharged G60. Um, and yeah, literally every component front to back has been replaced, upgraded to the best I could do anyway. <laughs> 190, 200 brake horsepower. Uh, so we had full engine rebuild, full gearbox rebuild with Quaife Limited slip diff. Um, all fuel lines are upgraded. Um, yeah, so the engine block itself is all standard, but uh, supercharger's on stage four. It's, it's pokey is, is probably the best way to say it. The power's just there, like, constantly yeah it's great fun everywhere you go it kind of it gets looks like people people wave and stare and like if you've got petrol station or whatever people will stop and chat to you which is which is quite nice i enjoy it i like i like people talking to me about the car uh because i say being something like I, I don't build car i don't know anything about cars really it's just what i've learned as i'm building this um i say the fact that i did quite a lot of it or most of it on my driveway is the thing that i think like gets to people most really right like, yeah there will be things to do in the future uh, is just going to be small details. Uh, eventually, there'll be probably new wheels come in, and and then it's just a case of like tidying up the engine bay and and just finishing off bits with the interior trim, as I've just had that done. Um, but I had it done to a to a deadline for a show, so we didn't get time to finish bits like the the door handles and and some bits in the boot. So there's always going to be extras to be to be done. Yeah, I wasn't originally going to have that done when the interior was being trimmed. Um, but we thought as a last minute thing we'll have the dashboard all done in Alcantara to match the door tops. Um, same with the centre console. Just a, a nice little touch just to finish it off. Yeah. I saw a guy selling them uh, quite cheap. I thought it's worth a punt. You know, I just, I'll, I'll, I'll buy them and then fit them to the car and see what I think. And then from there I just started adding more and more Porsche bits. So you've got the Porsche door handles, uh, the horn badge inside is Porsche, Porsche wheels. And then we carried that onto the interior, so with the houndstooth. Um, I think it just it just fits the type of the, the car, yeah. Just always loved 80s boxy cars. Just wanted something old and cool and slammed and that's it. I'd seen a really cool 80 about five years ago at Edition 38. It's always quite a fancied one. And uh, saw this come up for sale. Um, went and had a look at it and realised how good condition it was in and just thought, this needs to be stanced on some cool wheels and full custom suspension, air ride, um, manual, four-wave manual. Um, everything's custom because you can't buy anything off the shelves for these. So I had a, had a guy make a set of coilovers for me, then went and bought bags for those. The rear struts are from Poland. Um, it's taken me about a year to get the air ride right. 
but now I'm, last year I was running 17s, I'm running 15s this year, so I can literally lay on the floor. Um, just got it just right now, the suspension wise. The interior, it's, I just wanted to keep it OEM plus sort of, so the paddles and the dials, I've done, I've done just to make it look like they don't look out of place. Um, but the interior is mint, you know, I don't think anyone's ever sat in the back seats. Um, just change the steering wheel and the gear knob just to always fancy the wooden Nardi wheel, just to make it just right. So the front bumper is a complete one off. I've they normally come with like a, a rectangle that comes down like this, but I had that cut out and made into a smooth one piece. Um, yeah, done away with the toe eye, had that filled, so just to give it that smooth, smooth look. The wheels are very early Zenders. Um, that I got, got from a guy in Bulgaria, I think. Um, had all of the bolts done the same colour as the car. Just matched this to the grey on the rear of the car. Someone always knew someone who had one of these. A teacher, a, a neighbour or something. But there's not many people, you know, slamming them. Or, I, I belong to a group called Retrospect and never, there's a few cool Audi only, you know, Audis in that group. Um, but you know, like turbocharged sort of stuff, and you know, this is just like, oh, yeah, it gets me there. That's yeah. that's all. It's just low and slow. The name's Cos. It's my 635 CSI. I've used the car a little bit this year. I've done a. What have I done? I think I did this BMW Car Club Southern Concours. Did all right. Got um, second in class. So I was quite happy about that. Uh, done a couple of meets. I think Ace Calf. Well, apart from that, I've actually just driven the car and used it a few times. I'm not that much bothered about the shows, really. Um, the car's running good, passed its MOT as expected. Uh, there's a few little things I need to tend to, nothing major. Just comes with the territory with a car this age. There are plans, wheels are in motion. Um, I've started working at Bird's, the BMW specialist now. I'll run their suspension on my F31, I've run it on my E91 in the past. And the main man, Kevin there, he's got an M635 and I've got this and we're going to focus and develop some suspension for the E24. So I want to stick with a similar sort of ride height, but just get something that really delivers on the road properly. Retain some comfort and just make the car handle nice and drive nice. Today's good. So there's a few people we have not seen for a long time and it's good to see them and catch up with them. And there's people that you interact with and engage with online and I finally put a, the face to the cards and real life interaction. So it's nice to do that and say hello to these people. That's, that's what I like about events like this. It's, it's a much more personal thing and it's a very grounded, a very level headed event. We're all pretty hardcore enthusiasts, but we don't get too hung up about our own cars. It's, it's more of a social thing, really, with a common interest. Uh, so my name's James. Uh, it's a 1960 VW Beetle that I've had for coming up for nearly nine years now. Grew up around Volkswagen, so dad having a camper van um, and just going to many VW shows as a kid um, just meant that the Beetle was the one that I had to be when I came to buy the first car, yeah. I decided that I wanted one, um, and then in buying this one, it was fairly straightforward because we were actually on our way home from holiday at the time um, in the camper van and we stopped at a Volkswagen show on the way back and this was for sale um, and looked around it um, and a chap that we knew that looked after my dad's camper was at the show as well so he looked over it and um, sort of said this is you know for a right hand drive early Beetle really great condition um, and it was up for a pretty fair price at the time as well so um, yeah just just by chance came across it and uh, ended up buying it there and then that weekend and Dad went and picked it up a week later for me. So it was Cowlick stance when I got it. Um, so it was on BRMs. Uh, the back end was up really high. Um, front end, bit lower, well, a bit higher than it is now as well. Almost like a drag look setup um, for, yeah, for a drag strip. Um, and then, yeah, since I've had it over the years, I've lowered it. And then a couple of years ago, put the air ride kit on it and the, the wheels it's on now. Yeah, so it used to work back in its drag racing or drag strip days, it had a Porsche engine, Porsche air cooled engine in it. Um, so that's where that came from. Um, the badges on the back and then the, the fouches and the other Porsche accessories are just sort of well known 
in the Volkswagen scene, it's just right, a lot of people go for that look, um, taking sort of like, yeah, 911 probably inspired parts and, and wheels and, and putting them on Beatles. Pretty happy as it is now, yeah, yeah. Any, only other things for the future will just be maintaining it and maybe getting odd bits of the paintwork sorted, but other than that, it's pretty much how I want it. Amazing the amount of people like when you're on a motorway to pull up beside you and thumbs up or, and everyone seems to know someone that's owned a Beetle in their life, so you can't go and put petrol in it or go to the shops or anything without someone stopping and saying, oh, my dad used to have one or I used to have one, you know, um, yeah, just the general feedback you get, everyone seems to have owned a Beetle, everyone seems to love a Beetle, so yeah, you get stopped everywhere and people love, have, love to have a chat. Oh, 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 oh,